Today on Screener to Stream It. Hey, do you want to see my impersonation of a cyborg? Okay. Okay, here goes. How are you doing that? I'll never tell. Alita Battle Angel is rated PG-13 for sequences of sci-fi violence and action and for some language. It is the story of the title character Alita, who is a cyborg that's found in a junk pile by a humanitarian doctor named Ido. Surprised to discover that she was still alive, Ido uses his medical expertise to give her a new body. But there's a catch. Ha! Isn't there always? When she wakes up, Alita has no memory and so she ends up staying with Ido. Meanwhile, quite a lot of world building takes place. There's this floating city where the upper class lives and everybody else wants to live. A fast paced and dangerous blow your mind sports game called Motorball. Mountains of weird techie stuff. Gangs that attack people to steal their tech. And bounty hunters that maintain some symbols of order by tracking and killing the serious criminals. We really have a lot going on in what is barely a two hour movie. You're telling me. Add to what we just said, then look into Ido's backstory, Alita's search for her own identity, a love story, and a couple of villains that make the roving gangs and other thugs look like children by comparison. All right, on to the important question. How did we like it? Critics were 50-50 on this one, but it's an audience pleaser to be sure. We think that Alita Battle Angel is a good movie. So we're talking Alita Battle Angel. Very exciting. I don't know about y'all. I had a great time at the movie. I did. I really enjoyed it. It was very fun. The funny thing is, when we watched the trailer for it and did the trailer reaction, I said I was a sucker for world building. Yeah. And this gave me one of my favorite things about the movie is the world building, and one of my least favorite things about the movie is the world building. So you've got a whole pair of decks there. <laughs> well, so what happens is I really like the world. I, I love the aesthetic. I love the the little cars driving around, the cyborg guys. Like everything was just really eye-pleasing to me and I really enjoyed that. The problem was one of the big letdowns for me was the movie was basically an advertisement for a sequel. Oh, such an advertisement for a sequel. Like there's all this build and set up and ha <laughs> just kidding. Hey, come watch the next one. But <laughs> So well, the problem was, I was so invested in that world, and I was so in love with that world, and several of the characters. Yeah. But I just want more. Like I didn't get enough. I don't of think that that's world. a bad thing. They say leave them wanting more. I want to watch that sequel. It needs to happen. Oh yeah, I do too. But at no the good. same time, there's, like, I just I have this emptiness where I didn't get <laughs> everything I, I wanted. You're not the only person I've heard say that. Uh, right after the movie, I heard other people saying. Man, it feels like that was just the the only reason for that movie was to set up for the sequel. And I kind of see where they're going if you're looking at the plot of the movie. But if you're looking at just the development of the main characters, I think looking at that as the main plot, you may feel somewhat satisfied with the ending. Well, when we... And, and it wasn't just the ending. Like, so we were arguing over who... Uh, what was it? Nova. So, yeah. like, the... They showed Nova, and I'm looking at him like, what's that, Ed Norton? It was! Well, then the credits roll, and there's no Ed Norton, and I'm like, man, that had to be Ed Norton, and so I looked it up, and I'm like, it was, it was Ed Norton, but while I was looking it up, I saw that, like, Casper Van Dien was in the, like, credits, and there's there's quite a few, like... Jackie Earl Haley. Jackie Earl Haley. I did not recognize him at all in wow. that one, uh, but I was like, oh, man, that's so cool, and when I was looking it up, someone had an interview with Robert Rodriguez, and they were like, why are all these famous people in these, like... Which Jack Hero had, had a kind of a major part, but the, why are all these little people? And he's like, "Oh, it's so they can be in the the sequel, and you know, and then, and I want them for Whoa. the next one." And it's like he might have just set it up like so. Like Ed Norton has this tiniest little part, Casper Van Dien, yeah, tiniest you barely little part. Even see him, in yeah. The, like and I so didn't realize it's him until right at the end. I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" That's me too. There was that like, <laughs> scene at the end where he turns and he, he takes finally off got the a glasses, close up. Yeah, like, oh, it's Ed Norton. It's, and I was like, I'm pretty sure that's Ed Norton. Yeah. Well, unless the movie just makes a ton of money in China, there's a good chance there won't be a sequel. <laughs> oh, no! Uh, yeah. With the advertising budget plus the production budget on it, uh, they're estimating that it might have to make close to $550 million worldwide. Ooh. Well, he even said he hadn't written a script. He had, like, they hadn't done anything. But I really, again, every time I watch a movie and I like it, it always sounds like I don't. <laughs> <laughs> how that works. But I did really enjoy it. I enjoyed the world, but it did leave me longing. I wanted right. more. As a I wanted to know more story, about the people. It felt like something So was... I, uh, so Christoph Waltz is always amazing. Fantastic. And uh, his uh, Doc Ivo 
Like, that's a cool character. I want, like, I want more of that. And, like, I just I want to know more about him. I want to know where he comes from. And it left me... When the movie starts, everything is kind of a mystery. And, yeah. like, everybody has... Like, no one has a backstory. <laughs> and it, you just, it kind of unravels. But it, it does it too fast and too fragmented and too little of a piece for me to really latch onto him. But it, just watching them, man, that's cool. Um, <laughs> so, I'm going to stop you about Doc Ivo for just a second. Did anyone else, whenever he kind of came out there with his action sequence and his weapon, you're like, this is the dumbest thing, but I love it. Yes. I love how stupid this is. So he has a like a war hammer that's jet propelled on the back. <laughs> like a power hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Which, man, if you could hit somebody with something like that. And he like turns it on a dime. It'd be and, devastating. Well, and he looks so... He looks so awkward and so like frail and so uncomfortable swinging the thing. <laughs> yeah. Even with the cuts and yeah, it just didn't work. And I was kind of because that was kind of our first like actiony thing in the movie, and I was like, boy, this is not going to be good. But once they cut like Alita loose and was like, here, whoop some tail, then it was like that was actually cool. I yeah. actually enjoyed her robotic cyborgy flippy turny punchy things. So I never did couldn't really tell and I guess that's where you want to be is where you can't quite tell and I never did find satisfactory information was she like totally 100% CGI the whole time I or think were she they doing been. like masks and because all the behind the scenes stuff I've seen it's her in motion capture like she had all the motion capture yeah, stuff okay, on so, her face so I think that's, that's kind of what I suspected but since I couldn't quite tell that makes me happy well that was I don't an, know. <laughs> that was another one of the things that was kind of on my letdown list mm. I think her character was fully CGI the entire time. And there are, most of the time, it's beautiful. You can't right. tell. But when she hit the water, and when she went, they took her out to the lake, oh, and, yeah, the yeah, yeah. and she's walking through the water, it was, oh, it looked like 1994. Like, <laughs> hey, look, mom, what Microsoft Paint can do. I mean, it oh, was, no. <laughs> oh, it was bad to me. And I could be wrong. But, oh, it, it was so bad. And I was well, like, man, why? It was funny to me because there were several scenes where it goes a close up on her, and I'm like, mm, that's definitely CGI. And then it does reverse cut to whatever that guy was, her friend there. I'm like, no, she looks just like him. <laughs> 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 well, and I, I was scared because you know she had the big like. I guess they were trying to emulate the anime My eyes. First instinct was, oh, that's bad. Yeah, when but the trailers come out, that it was works. Terrible. It works. It's better than it looks. Well, and we, I was speculating. I wonder if they shrunk them down a little from the trailer. I'd like to see because I didn't. Or if I just got used to it, because it struck me in the trailer as weird, and I did, like it. I certainly thought it would bother me. Yeah, and I yeah, thought it was going to be, but it didn't the at all. First time it was jarring, but you get used to it pretty quick, and then that's just her. So. Yeah, and it didn't. I mean, I kind of accepted that that pretty much her entire body was robotic, and that I don't know, maybe the eyes were bigger as like a way to see better, have more the periphery vision. See you with. But yeah, no, and I was I was genuinely worried about oh, yeah. that. That didn't bother me. I was kind of worried about the because uh, when uh, Ed was Ed Scrine, Scrine, yeah. when he's the like cyborg bounty hunter and he's pretty much all metallic except yeah. for the face. Oh, the 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 attention to detail that oh, went yeah. in. Yeah, like oh, <laughs> whenever he turns around and like his back piece, did the mouth move or was that just me? I didn't like it, it, it I seemed looking. like it. Like there was so much detail on him. And it's like, that's that's like the Robert Rodriguez signature right there. Yeah, but again, in the trailer, when I saw that, I went, oh, like, like it was cool flashing in the trailer, but I'm like, 20 minutes of that, and it's going to be, yeah, right. Uh, and it didn't, like, he looked cool, he looked right. Like, they did an exceptional job with the visuals throughout this entire thing, whether it be the background, the foreground, the mm -hmm. people, the what, everything just looked cool. Yeah, I have Which to I love. I, I heard a few people say there were issues with the pacing. I didn't see that didn't myself. Didn't pacing. At all. I was entertained the entire time. Like there was always something going on that held my interest and kept me just enjoying the movie. Of course, right up until the <laughs> and stay tuned next week. <laughs> like, oh why? <laughs> so I will say this: the the main issue with the pacing is not for people who are serious moviegoers. It's for your passive moviegoers. There were families that came to see this. I'm assuming thinking it was going to be like the next Spy Kids movie, and it's not. <laughs> Uh, and there were children who were kind of like, oh, okay, this is a little violent, but I'm whatever. Oh, they use some vulgar language, but whatever. <laughs> but then, <laughs> little. yeah, that's what the kids Very said. Well like, oh, they used vulgar language, but I'm a kid, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
But toward the end of the movie, whenever there's a lot more character uh, reveals and there's a lot more dramatic uh, unfolds in the storytelling, the kids are just getting restless. And they were getting up and they were walking around and they were crying and screaming. And I didn't really feel like, you know, the kid was at fault there. I, I kind of felt like, yeah, you probably should have done some research and realized this actually is not a children's movie, even though it is very cartoony in its look. Rating PG-13 should have been a giveaway. Yeah. Well, and it, uh, <laughs> I think we were talking about the anime eye thing, and I just remembered, but, like, one of the things that got me is everybody had, and you were talking about you couldn't tell the difference between the, the boyfriend and, yeah, and Alina. Yeah, like, like the light on their skin and the way it played. Right. Just, like, Everything is slightly cartoony looking. Mm-hmm. And that may be how they kind but of But it, it made... Them everything blend together and yeah. work. Yeah. Then it was almost like watching a CGI, like mm-hmm. a full CGI movie. Like they just smoothed all the real stuff just a little just bit. Just a little to make to it blend. The... Yeah. And then it, it, but it made yeah. everything else work. It didn't make it, you know, jerky or stand out. And I yeah. thought that worked really well. That's been kind of an ongoing theme. If you look at Robert Rodriguez as an artist and, and not just as a movie director, that's been kind of an ongoing theme in his films is the blurring between the fantasy and the reality aspects and the retelling of stories and and where does the true story kind of rest and he's gotten to the point i think where it's he's able to do that in just every single shot of a movie like alita well all right y'all can argue or agree or whatever you feel but (laughs) so robert rodriguez to me is a lot of times style over substance Mm -hmm. like his stuff is beautiful and it's neat and it's fun but a lot of times you miss that that deep character development and 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 things like that and i kind of kind of felt the same way here like they did do some character development there was some backstory but it seemed very glossed over and kind of rapidly done for the sake of hey look at this cool shiny you know Mm -hmm. and Again, and I'm just talking like I didn't like it. I love the shiny. I like the, hey, look at this. That's cool. Um, I just, I was really disappointed in the fact that I liked everything so much and I just wanted more of it. I almost wish it was a TV show. Right. If it had been a serialized TV show where you could have spent time with this character and this character and this character. That being said, there was one character I absolutely loathed and I hated. Vector? No, I love Vector. Ah, the boyfriend? The boyfriend. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> the boyfriend. Was it Hugo? You go, yes. Go. Oh, I hate the boy. And the funny thing was, and I was like, maybe I just hate him okay, because he was he's wearing like like cat eye makeup or something. <laughs> like it, it was bothering does me. Does anyone else think he looks like a young Robert Rodriguez? I didn't think about it, but he kind of does. Yeah, I huh. didn't think about I, it. I had to look at the credits at the end to make sure but that wasn't one of his kids. I was like, man, I just and I really thought when I walked out, I said, I just didn't like him because he was the pretty boy. But I liked him when it started because he was kind of like Han Solo, right? He had the yeah. he had the leather jacket and he was kind of a rogue and kind of, and I'm like, ah, this is going to be all right. But he is literally, if you took, not an actual teenage girl, but if you took the stereotype of a teenage girl mm-hmm. and you asked that stereotype <laughs> to describe the perfect like boyfriend, they did that with him. He was tall. He was dark. He was handsome. He had perfect hair and he had perfect skin. <laughs> And he was a little bit dangerous, but super nice, and he had a kind heart, and yeah. he like hit all of those weird check boxes. Check, 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 and check, a lot check. of that like is unrealistic because it does not go together. And I felt it made some of his actions and his choices like I didn't understand the like he at one point betrays Alita five seconds later is trying to save her, ten seconds later is trying to give up the lifestyle he's living because it's bad, even though he just did and it's like <laughs> It was very kind of muddled and confusing. Well, and he's just... like a proxy for plot development. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to describe it. <laughs> Everything begins and ends with him. One of the things I thought that was interesting you were talking about, it'd be great, or it'd be great if this was like a series where you got an episode to develop each character. Uh, he's, he's right off the trails of that with, the, well, not right off the trails, but a couple years back the from Dust Till Dawn series. Um, that he had been working on. That's kind of what he did with that. Each episode, he dived into a different character. And I'm going to agree with you, but I'm going to word it differently about style over substance. I think that what I've noticed in his films is the substance is is driven on the plot and the environment and not on the characters. And so if you focus, if you're used to seeing stories with character driven, which most of us are, um, it can kind of feel like, well, it looks pretty, but but there's no soul to it. 
Mm. For me, this is kind of a change from what Robert Rodriguez usually does too. Mm. Uh, I, I think of him in terms of small movies. They take place in kind of a small area, not a whole lot of people. And this just builds this entire universe. And mm. this is something new I haven't seen from him before. And so I'd like to see this continue and continue to flesh out. Please, part two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And it, like I said, I, I really did enjoy it. I was really happy with it. Um, but it just, it left me wanting more. Mm. And like you said, that's a good thing, but it... <laughs> I don't, but it doesn't make me happy right, right now. It doesn't right. make me feel happy about it. And there were there were some questions that got answered, that got answered, but it, it didn't, not fully, and it felt rushed, and it felt just kind of slapped on yeah. so that we have an answer. And they certainly raised and that probably a comes lot. back to the well, that's the character development, so whatever. Instead of the they certainly raised a whole lot more questions than they answered. Yeah, I am wondering though if hopefully when they get to the sequel, because that like the last like two minutes. Felt like a, and suddenly it's so far later, and you have now achieved. This yeah, thing. skip like, five years. Well, what about that? I, I or once that. one winning season? You know, I guess technically that sounds interesting. Like, can we? So maybe they'll go back through that. Oh, who knows? I mean, well, that was my <laughs> third big. So the 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 story, and didn't realize this is not advertised. Didn't realize it when it started. But the story is basically around, and this is a loose interpretation, but it's basically around this game called Motorball. Like it drives, like it's it's the foil, it's the, it's the drives everything, and it's dumb. <laughs> yeah. I want to know the rules of Motorball, and I want to start a fantasy Motorball league. It's very simple. You take the ball, put it over there by right, any means necessary. Using motors, <laughs> using motors on your wheels. Motor ice skate. But but the thing to me was like the premise, like so not just the rules were dumb. Like, the premise is dumb. You have a utopian society that lives above everyone else. Yeah. All right, then we have this game where we take the most horrible, degenerate, violent people we can get, throw them together, and then whoever wins gets to come live with us. Well, isn't that kind of a commentary on well, I know. pro sports? But at the same time, I'm thinking, no one? Really? No one is going to go, yeah, they're not really letting you up there when you, when you win this thing. I mean, we did have that, you know... The thing with Vector kind of reveal, and I cannot pronounce that dude's name. It is like this. It is, yeah, like that's an abbreviation. His yeah. like actual name is like this long. That's amazing. But the dude that played Vector was uh, Cottonmouth on, uh, yeah, Luke Cage, Luke Cage, and he was my favorite part of Luke Cage. He does a villain, and I was disappointed. I didn't hate him. I was disappointed that he didn't get to. Because he was so cool as Cotton as that bad guy, yeah, and he yeah. was just kind of snivelly. I think he should have talked less in this. I think I, I wanted him to do more. Less he talked, the talk more less. intimidating he would have been. Talk less, do more. It was hard for him to be intimidating as being well. Well, he was a puppet. Yeah, and so it's kind of like it, you couldn't take him seriously because yeah. at any point in time he just <laughs> <laughs> shut down, and now he was someone else. <laughs> All right. Um, I think one of the silliest and funniest lines, sorry if it's a little bit of a, a spoiler, but whenever they go off the course and then the announcer is just like, oh my gosh, no one's ever done this. And I'm like, how is this not a disqualification if no one's done this? They're not even in the arena at this point. That's why I said it was ridiculous. It had no point. I mean, and, and a lot of movies have done this before, you know, oh, yeah. but just... I don't know. It seems like there could have, with the world you had and the characters you had, it just could have been so much more. I didn't get what I want. My guess is that's something from the source material that made more sense when you have, you know, several books to explain and you know, develop all that, and you don't have time in a two, barely two hours. <coughs> yeah. So. Um, did anyone see it in IMAX? No. I bet it would have been fun. Did you see it in 3D? No. no. Okay. Probably also would have been fun. I saw it in IMAX and 3D. <laughs> <laughs> IMAX 3D. Because I'm better than you. Um, that's actually not their slogan, but it should be. <laughs> it should be. Um, but there were scenes whenever you could tell that it went to the, the full IMAX, and they were very beautiful. And it, it, I say it's definitely worth it to see the full scope of what was intended in those scenes. But it is not an entire movie that is shot in IMAX. It's just a few sequences here and there. But I think that on some of the outdoor shots, it provides a little bit more scope. Mm, of, did, the, did it actually change between yeah. It changes. Like, most of the movie is, is kind of like 16 9. Yeah. And then it'll change into the full IMAX scope um, for some of the street scenes and some of the horizon scenes. 
and it's it was definitely worth it. I've seen that before. Yeah. Sometimes it's jarring, sometimes it's not. It wasn't very jarring here. Well, that's good. I'm glad it uh, at least worked and didn't throw you out. And maybe the 3D made the underwater sequence with her uh, make more sense because whenever I saw it, uh, it didn't look that bad. Well, but I don't know if that's you know how things don't thing. move correctly under, you know, right. like eat. So a normal person underwater looks a little weird, anyways. Mm -hmm. But when you put the CGI underwater, like her hair didn't move right, but it didn't move the right wrong. Like yeah, it just, right. I don't know. It just it looked weird to me. Any final thoughts on Alita? Uh, just uh, Jennifer Connelly was a little bit overkill for the role that she had. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there was a lot of like uh, did not realize that was Jackie Her Jackie Earl Haley at all. Uh, say the character name. <sighs> I can't say the character oh, name. Oh no! <laughs> I can't either. It's like G W. It's a lot of letters. It's a lot of letters. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> uh, all right. So we recommendations. Yeah. I, I do want to go last because I have a ton of them. Last. I guess I'll go. Um, so, like I said, my favorite part of the movie that kind of leaves it as a standalone movie that you could enjoy is the development of Alita from her being found all the way to her kind of being a hero, a hero at the or a heroine at the end. Um, if you like that kind of development of humanity and a character, I would recommend Ex Machina. Uh, it's kind of an like independent movie from a few years back. It did get nominated for some awards. Um, it is a very different movie. It is not an action movie. It is not a family movie. Now there was Alita. <laughs> if you're kind of disappointed that Alita wasn't a family movie and you really wanted to get something to take your kids to, literally any Spy Kids movie. Any of them. Yeah. Okay, so I had a movie that I've been planning to do on this the whole time, and I'm changing it now. Oh. <laughs> because after we talked about Motorball, <laughs> it just made me want to watch Roller Ball, Ball. Yes. which is a it's much better night. movie. The 70s Con version, <laughs> James Caan, seek it out, watch it, ignore the Chris Klein movie. <laughs> I like the Chris Klein one too. Well, I'm going with... <laughs> we'll see that. I'm going to admit a bunch of them. I'm going sadly with a movie that wasn't that popular for reasons I get it, but I'm going with Ghost in the Shell. Okay. And you could same go the cartoon. Thing, if you like the feeling, cartoon yeah. better, go for that or the anime one, because yeah. that one's great. But the main, mainly it was the world building and the blurring of the lines between human and mechanical are very closely related in, in these because you've got the cyborg main character, although, which had no memory again, and I, Alita was a lot more fun than the movie yes. Scarlett Johansson, Ghost in the Shell. I thought Alita was a much better movie. It than was Scarlett just Johansson. felt tighter, faster paced, and... I can't speak to how true it is to the source material. I know the Ghost in the Shell movie, they, it was weird. Everything looked exactly the same, but was different. Like, it, yeah. it's hard to even explain it if you hadn't seen the original, because it's, but <clears> that, it was, it was fun, just not as much fun as Alita, I thought. Well, so like I said, I had a bunch of them. Realistically, you were going to go with The Fifth Element, right? I was. So, the best recommendation I really can give is The Fifth Element. If you want that sci-fi world with cool mm -hmm. stuff, and it had what I thought was a, a really great story and was a lot of fun, I really enjoyed The Fifth Element. But as I was watching this movie, like all these other movies kept popping into my head, and mm -hmm. like most of them are going to be hated. Rollerball was one of them. <laughs> uh, Double Dragon. Oh, like, wow. <laughs> but not all of Double Dragon, but the, the uh, Abobo, the, the mm -hmm. muscle guy... Like when, uh, again, the Jackie Earl Haley character that I can't pronounce, like the bad guy in that and the bad guy in uh, Double Dragon, they oh, just, yeah. he was this giant, muscly, like way over the top large, and that just kind of reminded me, and he had a little like supernatural stuff in there, and I know everybody hated that movie, um, <laughs> but that was one of them, but my, my recommendation, and it's another one that most people don't like, but Judge Dredd. Not, which, which not dread. Oh, not, I, not dread, the good dread. Not the good dread. Ah. Like, because the good dread is good. It is really good. I love the new dread. It's ultra violent. But it, it doesn't <laughs> like. I don't get the same connection that right. I do with Judge Dread, the Sylvester Stallone, like Rob yeah. Schneider. But it just has this crazy cartoony world that they're in. Like the story is not similar at all or anything. But just like for that crazy over the top like and the dystopian future family. world and desert family. Yeah, just yeah. all that. Like they're pieced together out of junk and they have the. Uh, can't remember what the robot's called. Uh, 
they have the big robot that is uh, yeah, they're trying the to not Terminators. Yeah, that they're yeah. trying to put back together. So all that like visually just reminded me of yeah. Judge Dredd. And it is it is a terrible movie. It is a panned movie pretty much by everyone. That one's so bad it's good. But it's fun. It's so it's terrible. Fun. It is fun. So you can watch if you want a good one, go watch Fifth Element. If you just want to have fun with a bad one, then watch uh, watch Judge Dredd. I was thinking Ed 209 the whole time. Yeah, with the enforcement droids. I don't know, it didn't give me the same world. Because it was kind of set in a contemporary world, so it just didn't give me the same feeling. Robocop 2? Where he's got the the screen. Such a bad (laughs) movie.